We present our indications and technique for a hip manipulation to treat postoperative extraarticular adhesions following hip arthroscopy. Here are our disclosures. Hip arthroscopy is a very common procedure for treatment of femoral acetabular impingement syndrome. One potential cause of postoperative pain is the development of pericapsular adhesions which restrict motion. Pericapsular extraarticular adhesions can occur in the plane overlying the capsule and beneath the overlying flexor tendon sheath or overlying muscles. Patients will often present with pain and a sensation of restricted motion at the end range of motion, particularly in the butterfly stretch position as well as hip extension. In these patients, if we are concerned with postoperative extraarticular adhesions, we will discuss a manipulation under anesthesia as long as they are more than three months postoperative in order to allow appropriate labral and capsule healing after the index hip arthroscopy. Our anesthesia protocol uses sedation only. We are prepared to bag mask ventilate if needed. Detailed communication with the anesthesia team occurs prior to the procedure. The sedation medications utilized include midazolam, fentanyl, propofol, ketamine, and lidocaine. We begin with a pre-procedure assessment of motion. With the patient supine, we check hip flexion, and with the hip flexed to 90 degrees, we check hip internal rotation, external rotation, and a combination of adduction and external rotation in the butterfly position. The manipulation can begin with pulling gentle traction on the hip joint. This can be done with the use of a post. While the senior author's preference is to perform postless traction for the hip arthroscopy itself, in the setting of a post-operative manipulation under anesthesia, the post is useful in pulling gentle traction as it is only used for a few seconds, with minimal risk of pudendal nerve paresthesias. Fluoroscopy can be used to confirm joint distraction, which typically is less than the one centimeter of joint distraction used for hip arthroscopy procedures. The manipulation then begins. An assistant stabilizes the pelvis while the surgeon can perform hip flexion, abduction, and external rotation circumduction into hip extension. More focus is placed on the external rotation extension circumduction as opposed to internal rotation, as this tends to be the area where the patient feels the most motion restriction. This is performed with gentle but not excessive force in a controlled manner. 10 to 15 total manipulations can occur with frequent pauses and static motion checks to help determine whether the manipulation is complete. We then check the hip again after completion of the manipulation to determine the range of motion in hip flexion, internal rotation, and external rotation, and in the butterfly position, which is a combination of hip adduction and external rotation, measured as fist height off the table. Here we demonstrate the manipulation under anesthesia procedure, which is typically performed in the operating room. It begins with a pre-procedure measurement of hip flexion, internal and external rotation with the hip flexed at 90 degrees, abduction, and fist height off of the table with the leg in the butterfly position. The manipulation itself focuses on hip flexion, abduction, external rotation into extension circumduction, this maneuver is performed multiple times with frequent checks of motion to determine whether motion has improved. We finish with a post-manipulation measurement of hip range of motion. This is an example of one patient's pre- and post-operative motion as documented at the time of manipulation under anesthesia procedure. In summary, in patients more than three months post-operative from hip arthroscopy, this novel technique for hip manipulation under anesthesia can address post-operative hip arthroscopy, pericapsular, extraarticular adhesions, which can be the cause for restricted hip range of motion and post-operative pain. This non-invasive technique, which only requires anesthetic sedation, can result in resolution of pain related to extraarticular adhesions and demonstrates immediately improved hip range of motion. Thank you.